On the 19th of February, our church celebrates the feast of St. Philothée. The following are some thoughts on her life and works. Philothée was born in Athens into an affluent family in the fateful year of 1550, when Christianity was being put to its severest test by a malevolent act from Islam holding hostage all of Greece. Reared in an atmosphere of love and forbearance, she was given in marriage to a young man whose early death made her a widow before she was 16. Returning to her parents, she took up an active role in family as well as civic and church affairs, finding contentment only when she was doing something for the oppressed and the poor, a peace of mind which drew her to closer to the church. The family wealth afforded her the pleasure of charitable work, and while still a young woman, she had gained the respect and love of the community, not only for her charity, but for her sincerity as well. When her family died, Philothée found herself the owner of extensive holdings, the direction of which she assigned to others while she became a nun in the Orthodox Church. Meanwhile, her considerable wealth was put to use not only to help the poor, but in the glorification of the Lord with the erection of several churches and the nunneries in and around the city of Athens. At her direction, the nuns transferred from passive to active interests, learning to supplement their devotions with practical crafts and arts for the good of the church as a whole. Her useful works set the pattern for handiwork that has been the hallmark of nunneries for many years. There was little trace of the glory of the Byzantine Empire, but the glory of Christianity was present everywhere, much to the annoyance of the Turks, who had fondly hoped that Muslim pressure would result in the gradual replacement of Christianity by their own Muslim faith. This Turkish effort met with absolutely no success, but the pressure was constantly being applied to the hapless Greeks, nevertheless, and the unrelenting Muslims sought every means of discrediting the leaders of the Christian community. But leaders like Philothée did not give ground and were made even more resolute in their service to Jesus Christ. When it was evident that Islam could not take root in Athens, a Christian stronghold since the days of the apostles, the Turks, lashed out at those in the vanguard of Christianity. They deliberately selected Philothée as their principal target, not only because everything she did was in open defiance of the Muslims, but they considered her femininity a weakness which would more readily acquiesce. They were unaware that Christian defiance knows no sex. They might as well have assailed the rugged mountains that surround the city, and in their frustrated anger they set themselves on a brutal course of terrorism. Philothée had built a beautiful church dedicated to St. Andrew, which still stands today. And it was in this house of God that the Turks set upon her and her friends during a service. The defenseless women were clubbed and stoned, then dragged out into the street to be brutally murdered in full view of outraged Athenians. Philothée was carried from the scene of this carnage, but succumbed to her wounds on the 19th of February 1589 at the age of 39.